Uh, what I was going to talk to you all about today was um, Italian ryegrass and the glyphosate resistant version uh, first got started down in the Delta of Mississippi uh, about seven, eight years ago I guess now and it's progressively moved its way up north um, uh, through the Delta through both Arkansas and Mississippi and now we have it here in Tennessee and that's something we increasingly get more and more calls on is trying to manage glyphosate resistant Italian ryegrass. Um, in cotton and in soybeans, we've got some decent options post-emergence, most, most notably any of the uh, graminicides, the most widely used one would be Select or some kind of Select brand. In corn, we've got no good options. Uh, if you don't have it controlled prior to the corn immersion, we have no options to control it. There's no herbicide in corn that will, will do you any good on it. So it's imperative that you have it burned down ahead of time in corn. In soybeans, as you can see here, uh, we have some Italian ryegrass that was burned down uh, a couple times now with glyphosate, uh, and most of it's still here. And that's something we see repeatedly. And on corn, you're really without luck. In soybeans, we can come back with select and control it. The concern is, though, that's the last herbicide we have that's effective on it. So just relying on select post-emergence in these other crops isn't a long-term viable option. Uh, we've got to use multiple techniques to control it, whether it's more effective in a burn down uh, arena, which, you know, tillage where appropriate, we can't do much of that in Tennessee, but we do have a few fields we can till, or trying to burn down effectively with, with gramoxone, um, a couple of shots of it, or earlier on uh, putting some residuals out like dual uh, in more of a fall applied program is probably some of the things we're going to need to start implementing to uh, control this particular weed long term. So this is a close-up of what Italian ryegrass looks like. It's been hit a couple times with Roundup now. Um, this one is kind of semi-tolerant to glyphosate. We hit, there's other biotypes out of Mississippi that are almost completely impervious and would be well, well growing up at this point if you'd hit it with glyphosate at all. The key characteristic on, on, it, on ryegrass really is it has no hair on it. That's one of the big things that differentiate it from a lot of other weeds. And it has clasping oracles, which is almost like two fingers that reach around the backside of the stem. Well, you can see it there. That's one of the main characteristics. Of course, another plant species it has is this wheat. <laughs> it has clasping oracles as well. But it's a little different from Italian ryegrass, particularly from the, the, having the hairs on the plant. The other point I wanted to make was from a cover crop perspective. Uh, we're using more and more cover crops here in Tennessee. We really like um, uh, cereal rye as a cover. It's a great cover. Uh, but a lot of folks get that confused with Italian ryegrass. <laughs> cereal rye is easy to control with a herbicide. Italian ryegrass is anything but. And you want to watch, watch for it and it looks, well, that's what it looks like.